As a cultivation genius who has achieved a new realm every two years since he was a year old, Wang Ling is a near-invincible existence with prowess far beyond his control. But now that he's 16, he faces his greatest battle yet, senior high school. With one challenge after another popping up, his plans for a low-key high school life seem further and further away. Wang's father applies the amulet on him, and the magic beast says the world is saved. He warns Wang to derail from doing such foolish things again, because he acted against the law of nature and restarted the world many times. The destruction of the positive and negative spiritual forces has caused immeasurable damage to the world's spiritual force, so it is difficult to maintain world peace. Wang sighs dejectedly. Zhuo Yi informs the chief that Zhang Liuying has been taken into custody and will be transferred to the Supreme Court afterward. The chief thanks him for helping them exterminate the Shadow Faction. Zhuo Yi questions the mysterious party that wants Soon Rong assassinated. He ponders deeply, while the chief receives a call about an occurrence related to the sword competition. The chief turns on his TV screen to show Zhuo Yi that a space station detected a spiritual force tsunami centered around faction. Fenine's competition field. He says, the gross national spiritual force product depreciated sharply while some spiritual vehicles have gone down, and the cause is unknown but under investigation. The chief tells Zhuo Yi his superiors are unhappy about the news, and they have the cultivation department under much pressure. The broadcaster says the world's spiritual force is at 4.8, which is very low, and either forwarding, rewarding, or putting into his favorites can cure it. Zhuo Yi agrees to find the cause, and the chief instructs him to cancel the sword competition on his way out. At the Faction 60 school, Chen Chao says they had an overwhelming advantage over Faction 59 in the preliminary, and they would have made it to the finals if they hadn't called off the competition. Sun Rung reminds them that making it to the top 10 is enough to celebrate. Chen agrees with her, considering that a force value 5 laggard was in their team. He says Wang has not been talking since the competition questioning if he is withdrawing. Sun Rong of Confirms that he has been truly distant. However, Wang is just enjoying his quiet daily life after his emotions got bound by the amulet. Their instructor Ms. Pan walks into the class and commends the students for turning in their homework for the summer vacation, so they truly deserve to be in the class elite. She announces they will take another spiritual force test to determine whether they worked hard during their vacation to transit into the intermediate foundation phase. Ms. Pan informs them that any student below the foundation phase will be deported to the ordinary class, while students who excel in the ordinary class will be promoted to the class elite. Sun Rong is surprised everyone is not in the intermediate foundation phase, and Chen replies to her that only some have the talent and family background like her. Chen says he broke through to the foundation stage during the vacation while most students didn't practice. They suddenly remember Wang, and Sun Rong offers to perfuse her spiritual energy into him, while Chen Chao proposes to help him break through with his mercy palms. Still, Sun Rong disagrees with him saying the forcible breakthrough will harm Wang's meridian. They argue with each other until Guo Hao stops them and informs them Wang Ling has left. At the restroom, Jinke asks his master what he will do, and Wang Ling replies that the test is for status, not for strength, so he can't evade it. Jinke hides when he notices Guo Hao's presence. Guo Hao comes in and offers to help Wang if he cooperates with him to make the golden pill for the foundation faces as they did before. Wang detects he is not in the intermediate foundation phase yet, so he asks him. Guo Hao realizes Wang Ling has discovered his status, so he kneels and begs him while explaining that his parents won't take it easy if he gets sent to class ordinary. Wang Ling agrees to work with him, so they head out to meet the magic beast. The test commences, and Mr. Wang Zukong demonstrates the process, saying each student will stand at the center of the formation and concentrate their spiritual energy so the formation will adjust power automatically based on the testee's strength. A thunderbolt will strike, and those who get struck by it but their bodies do not explode will pass the test. He assures the students of their safety. While Mr. Wang continues his explanation, Sun Rong notices Wang Ling's absence, and she asks about him. Chen Chao assures him that Guo Hao is searching for him, and they will return in time for the test since their class is the last. Ms. Pan looks through the field and realizes Wang and Guo's absence, so she decides to search for them. Guo Hao refines the foundation pill with the help of the magic beast's time speed. Guo Hao tells Wang the pills only boost their status for one hour, so he has to take them right before the test. He suddenly hears the footsteps of Ms. Pan, and he gets stuck on what to do. Wang Ling comes up with a plan, so she enters to find them naked and drying their clothes. Ms. Pan screams at them, questioning why they are in the refining room during the test. Guo Hao lies that they fell into the pool and are drying their clothes, 
She sees the furnace and asks what is happening while approaching it. The magic beast jumps at her to stop her, so Guo Hao quickly brings out the pills. When she stands up and checks the furnace, she discovers they are drying their socks inside it. She angrily asks them to make haste and join the test. Wang Ling asks Guo Hao about the pills, and he suddenly remembers he swallowed them to hide them. The pills start digesting in his body, causing the spiritual force to pound on his meridians. His body keeps swelling, and he tells Wang he will break up if the pills are unblocked. Wang Ling hits Guo massively, and he falls flat on the ground. Guo opens his eyes to see Chen Chao waking him up to inform him it is his time for the test. He walks up to the formation in doubt after realizing the pill has taken over one hour, so it may no longer work. He is surprised after realizing he passed the test. He wonders if he is actually in the intermediate foundation phase, but Jinke tells Wang that his hit pushed him through the bottleneck. Wang Ling gets called for his test, and Mr. Wang Zukong gives him a helmet because his spiritual force is low. The test commences. And Jinki tells Wang there is a bug in the formation because they didn't consider cultivators like him. The thunderbolt escalates, and the students question what is happening. Sun Rong tries to run into the formation, but Mr. Wang stops her. He asks them to unplug the doom's socket. The city experiences a blackout instantly, and the world's total spiritual force value drops again. Wang Ling throws his sword to Sun Rong and urges her to cut the connection with it, saying peachwood swords are insulators. Sun Rong successfully disconnects the doom, but it causes a crack in the ground. Wang asks Mr. Wang if he passed, but he opens his mouth wide in shock. The incident is later classified as the malfunction of the doom-breaking system, but Jinke's force created a crack in space, causing the spiritual force of their world to disperse into another. In the demon world, the demon emperor speaks to his counselor about the crack in the ground. The counselor explains to him there is a crack in the abyss that leads to the human world. The demon emperor tells him he sent one of his demon kings to the world before. The counselor affirms and says the demon king he sent was the magic frog, who was his apprentice at the time. The emperor says it has been three demon in years, and he has not presented the human world to him. He feels that the crack in the abyss is causing the human world to absorb the spiritual force of the demon world despite coveting their spiritual energy. The counselor questions if their gross national force product has been reduced, and the emperor angrily questions what the magic frog is up to. The counselor offers to go the world and check what his useless apprentice is up to. The magic beast sees a message from his master that will be visiting, and he freezes immediately. Wang Ling and his father sit in front of the TV watching the news while Wang's mother hears a knock on the door, and she opens it to find the magic beast. The beast sits between Wang and his father, and he hugs Wang saying he misses him. At school, instructor Wang Zukong questions why instructor Pan wants to do a home visit for Wang Ling. She explains that he has the lowest scores and is still in class elite after the test. Mr. Wang's asks if she thinks he cheated, and she declines, saying she is more concerned about the cost of spiritual energy in their faction that has skyrocketed after the test, and they are almost going bankrupt. Mr. Wang wishes her a safe visit and informs her he is going for a personal matter when she asks if he would be going with her. The demon counselor arrives in the human world, and he sends the magic beast, Froggy 2, a text message that Froggy is ignoring his message and will come to find him. At Wang's house, Froggy 2 explains to Jinki about his situation with his master, and that serving with him was the most miserable experience of his life and he still shows up in his nightmares. Wang asks if that's his reason for hiding in his house, and Froggy affirms. Mrs. Wang announces dinner, and they all head to the dining table. While eating, Mr. Wang informs Wang Ling that he will be trying out his new spiritual figure that will help with his speech impairment, and he asks Froggy too for his assistance. Mrs. Wang hopes the figure will help this time because the price of magic pills has gone up. She talks about Wang getting a job after school before he stands up to leave. They suddenly see Froggy 2 shaking while on the chair. Froggy 2's master, oblivious that the magic frog is now a dog, finds it strange to see the residue of his spiritual energy in a doghouse. Mr. Wang instructs Froggy 2 to assist him in fixing the new amulet. He adds that the situation may be catastrophic if they don't handle it smoothly. He gives Froggy the new amulet, while he uses a technique to pull off the old one, and Froggy fixes it immediately. Wang mutters some words they can't understand, which gets them confused until Mr. Wang realizes Froggy 2 fixed the amulet upside down. Mr. Ling imagines the world getting destroyed, but his imagination leaves him when he discovers that Froggy 2 has devoured the spiritual energy. Froggy 2's master walks through the streets in search of Froggy 2. He admits that Froggy's spirit is so strong because it is everywhere, and he just can't locate him. Mrs. Wang welcomes Ms. Pan into the house when she arrives. Mrs. Wang asks her husband if Wang's speech is better because he doesn't seem different to her. Surprisingly, Wang walks up to the instructor to bow down and welcome her. Ms. Pan explains to Wang's parents that he has not been performing well in class, but she receives a huge shock when Mrs. Wang says they are not bothered 
as long as he makes friends and has fun in school. She talks about Wong not doing his vacation assignment, failing the pill refining class, and how he has not been enthusiastic about his studies. Wong appears and proves her wrong by showing her the figures he made for the summer vacation, the pills he produced on his own, and also some elements of his studies. Ms. Pan goes speechless with Wong's presentations, while Mrs. Wong questions her husband about the new amulet he gave Wong because it is causing him to act strange. Mr. Wong instructs her to distract Ms. Pan while he gives him a new one. While Mrs. Wang shows Ms. Pan around, Mr. Wang fixes an already adjusted amulet and places it on Wang. He explains that he has adjusted the logic on the spiritual figure, so it should work better. But Wang tells his father he feels weird about the amulet and he sees illusions. Mr. Wang gets confused for a bit until he sees the gadgets and different objects in the house moving. Mrs. Wang brings Ms. Pan through the stairs after showing her around the apartment, which to Ms. Pan is quite unusual. Mrs. Wang suddenly sees the occurrence in the living room, so she tells Mrs. Pan she has to discuss something with her privately. Mr. Wang informs Wang he has enlightened the furniture, and Wang replies to his father that he has a bug in the amulet. Mr. Wang informs him he can't do anything about it, so he has to use his invincible power for it. Wang grabs Froggy too, and they succeed in making one of the books stop, so his father urges him to carry on. Mrs. Wang gives Ms. Pan an emotional story that Wang Ling has low scores because being Wang's parents, they are not very talented cultivators, so they have not passed the bodybuilding phase. She adds that Wang did not have friends as a child, so they are happy now that he has made a lot of friends in his new school and is living more happily. Ms. Pan looks remorseful at her story. Wang successfully controls the objects, and Mr. Wang instructs Froggy 2 to assist him in removing the amulet because Wang has overused his spiritual energy. But Froggy 2 sits in front of the door in fear, realizing his master has detected his location so he passes out. His master appears at the door and attempts to open it, but Wong's spiritual force charges at him and blasts him off. Ms. Pan and Mrs. Wang arrive downstairs, and she explains. She understands Wang Ling more after hearing his mother's story. They thank her for coming and bid her farewell. Froggy too wakes up and discovers his master is gone, so he decides to go home. The scene opens with a flight attendant helping out a passenger. A lady called Yue makes up in the restroom and appears before her partner on the plane, Idler, to ask how she looks. He screams at her and advises her to tone her beautification art down because they are on a mission. She tells him she made up for him, but he is focused on work. Idler tells her he feels something unusual and suddenly, the airplane starts shaking due to turbulence. The hostess announces there is a fluctuation in Songhai's airspace's impulses, so they need to stay still and fasten their belts. The hostess fastens her seatbelt, but Yue stands midway without making a move. The hostess implores her to sit and fasten her seatbelt, but she refuses and shuts her up with magic. Just as she says she doesn't have to fasten her seatbelt with the power she has mastered, the airplane crashes, causing her to lose her balance. Idler tries to hold on to her, but she falls off instantly. Go Hao tells his team the story of the sword liner who crashed in the plane 10 years ago and the idle beauty in seclusion who was seriously injured after falling into Songhai. They continue discussing the rumors behind the two assassins until Ms. Pan enters the classroom to disperse them. She informs them a student from the class ordinary has been promoted to the class elite because of her extraordinary performance in the spiritual force test. She appears at the door, and Wang recognizes her immediately as the girl from his new world. Soon Rong sees Wang staring, and she thinks he is staring at her, so she blushes. The new girl introduces herself as Lin Xiaoyu. Ms. Pan urges them to take care of her because she has family difficulties, while Jinke tells Wang she looks familiar. She informs them their instructor, Mr. Wang, is on an assignment, so she would be taking the class. Mr. Wang trails the idol beauty to a location using a detector map. Zhuo Yi urges him to be careful because she is a supreme assassin and Mr. Wang tells him he is a supreme instructor, so he doesn't need to doubt him. Mr. Wang immediately spots the target, and he orders her, Zhang Liuyue, to surrender, questioning where she has been all these years. But the figure explodes immediately with Mr. Wang in it. The actual Zhang stands on a building and mocks the Cultivation Crew's group for not making progress. She says it was an easy trick, and they got lured into it easily. She concludes that it is time to fetch her sister. Chen Chao and Guo Hao discuss Zhang Liu Ying. Guo Hao tells Chen that Zhang Liu Ying, the Shadow Faction's boss, is imprisoned in the faction's underground jail. Chen Chao says the faction's security is weak, so he is surprised they are keeping her there. But Guo Hao reminds him Froggy too was imprisoned there, so rumor has it there is a strong underground jail of high level. Guo's conversation gets cut short by a movement. Guo detects the lady as the assassin in their picture, so Chen Chao and Wang chase after her. They find follow her to a lumber room that has another dorm room, which they enter. They assume the place is Idler Beauty's hideout because the place gives off a rough hangout vibe. Wang announces that someone is coming, so they hide under a table to discover a lady undressing while they hide. They quickly dissuade her from completely underdressing by showing their faces, 
and they discover it is the new girl from class. She screams at them and charges toward them to attack them with a broom, but she misses, and it touches a statue that rotates. Suddenly, the floor opens, and they all fall into an underground dungeon, so Wang jumps after them. Liu Ying asks her sister Liu Yue her purpose for coming, and Liu Yue replies falsely that she misses her. She informs her that the security guards have no strength to stop her when Liu Ying asks about them. Liu Ying implores her sister to release her so they can join hands and regain the shadow faction, but Liu Ying brings out an arrow to attack her, claiming she failed to fulfill her assassination contract to kill Sun Rong. Liu Ying questions how her sister got involved with them, and she says it was a mission from the demon world, so she should proceed to kill her. Liu Yue shoots the arrow toward her, but she misses it intentionally, telling her she has scores to settle. Wang and the others fall through the jail, and Wang apologizes to Liu Yue for disrupting her. Jinke tells him he has found a secure room, so Wang creates a portal that makes them land in a room. They suspect the room to be the Idler Beauty's secret room because of the equipment in the room. Wang questions Jinke if that is his reason for making them arrive at the room, but he declines, saying the other rooms are not secure. Lin turns their attention to the legendary Wall of Clues, and Chen Chao questions what Idler Beauty is investigating. He sees the picture of the Idler Beauty and a headline that a sword liner crashed 10 years ago. Liu Yue explains her plight to Liu Ying that she fell in love with the Idler Beauty with his unspeakable features for a hundred years and enjoyed their moment together while they traveled through land and oceans. She became the shadow faction leader at the time, and everything was good until the plane crash happened. Liu Yui says she fell into the demon world and spent ten years there, locked in the sick palace, while translating documents of the human and demon world, until she came across the assassination contract for the shadow faction's boss with her sister's name. She realized Liu Ying coveted her position, so she caused the plane crash. Liu Ying tells her, she may have coveted her position as the shadow faction boss, but she wasn't involved with the crash. Liu Yue fires the arrow at her angrily, but Mr. Wang appears to stop it. He tells her she doesn't know the actual truth. Guo Hao connects the dots of the incident that occurred during the plane crash and the magic frog invasion together. Wang jumps us abruptly, explaining that he finally understands what happened. Wang flashes back to the occurrence when he defeated the magic frog and saved the plane. The idle beauty came out of the airplane after his beloved Yue had disappeared into the demon world, so he decided to stay in Songhai and find a secret base until her return. They all express their emotions at the story while Wang shakes his head at them in disbelief. At the jail, Mr. Wang explains to Liu Yue that he is idler beauty, and he waited for her at the same place he lost her. Liu Yue sheds tears of joy while she tells him that he has added weight. Mr. Wang explains he devoured food whenever he felt downhearted because of her. Liu Yue cries and they kiss each other, causing Liu Ying to scream. They both depart to see the moon and stars as he promised her. Mr. Wang explains the best way to care for spiritual swords and spirits in class because misappropriation causes them to go blunt and useless. Liu Yue asks how to maintain them, and Mr. Wang informs them they can find the procedures in a guidebook. Jing Kei appears to Wang and tells him he has not been maintained since he was little. Wang ignores him and stares at Lin Xiaoyu. Guo Hao asks Sun Rong on their way home if she has fixed her sword. She affirms that the body has been repaired, but the spirits are still undergoing recovery. She asks about their swords, and Chen Chao shows them the toolkits he got online. Sun Rong discourages him, saying he has to maintain his sword in a shop because of its size. Guo Hao says his sword is blunt, so he needs to work on it. Chen offers to file it for him, but he declines, saying he has the coupons for a maintenance shop. Sun Rong shows him their VVIP ticket, and she urges everyone to come with her to the shop. They arrive at the maintenance shop, and Lin Xiaoyu appears to them as the maintenance officer. She repairs Guo's sword, and they commend her for doing a great job. She explains that she grew up among swords because her parents entrusted her with a sword spirit, who acted as her sister. She continues explaining her history and that she is working in different spiritual sword shops, hoping to meet her sister someday. She tells Chen Chao she doesn't have a spiritual sword because she can't afford one. Tang Jingzi and his crew members appear and act rudely to Wang and his team again. Tang says they are at the shop for maintenance and they're certain it'll help her boost her compensation with their credit cards. He gives her their swords and orders her to deliver them to them the next day. Lin Xiaoyu complains that she uses three days for maintenance work, so Sun Rong informs him she has booked her for the whole day. Lin Xiaoyu declines her offer and she accepts to do Tang's work. He mocks her state and tells her she should work hard so she can afford a spiritual sword as well, while he walks away. Sun Rong expresses her anger at them, 
and Chen practices beating them up while they walk out. Sun Rom considers buying her a spiritual sword, but Guo stops her because it could affect her self-esteem. Wang stops on his way, and he reads a description. They all join him, and he explains to them that the best self-help they can render to her is to forge her a sword, which they all agree to. Later at night, Lin Xiaoyin closes from work and they express their pity for her walking so late. They decide to forge the swords, and Sun Rong brings out a guidebook. Chen Chao steals a holy relic from home, which Guo accredits as good material. Sun Rong brings a unique spiritual potion, while Wang brings the demon counselor's element that fell when he got blasted. Wang tells them he saw the element outside his house, and the spiritual forces level of the element almost destroys the forging system. They put the materials in the furnace for the sword to forge. The next day, Lin Xiaoyu arrives at work to find the crew around. Sun Rong presents her with the new spiritual sword so she can use it in class in the coming week. Lin Xiaoyu cries intensely, and they apologize to her, thinking it is because of their imperfect job. Lin Xiaoyu explains to them that the sword looks like her sister. Wang designed the sword because he knew that was his sister's look. She enthusiastically shouts it is the best gift she has received. Tang arrives again in the morning and mocks them for forging an ugly sword for her. He informs them the manager maintained the sword for him by himself, so he is not there to make her work late, like Sun Rong questioned, while Guo mocks the sword. Tang challenges Lin Xiaoyu to do a trial test on the sword to determine the extent of its power. Sun Rong tries to use her VIP ticket for her, but his security declines, saying he booked the appointment first. To their surprise, Tang informs them his family owns the shop, and he orders Lin Xiaoyu to follow him. Lin Xiaoyu accepts the offer because she doesn't desire to lose her part-time job. She stands on the testing ground fully armored, but still in fear. Tang cuts through the different objects for the test. Tang commends the work of his master's maintenance, and he points it toward her in a bid to strike. Chen Chao tries to get down to save her, but he gets stopped by the security. Guo Hao tells him it is dangerous to perform a live trial test on someone, and Wang agrees with him. Tang tells Lin Xiaoyu it is her turn while he charges toward her. Tang's sword suddenly gets stuck on Lin's new sword, and some demon-like vines extend from her sword to his. Wang informs them Lin's sword is absorbing Tang's spiritual force and his swords. It goes on for a while until Wang stops it with his sword, and Tang kneels while shrieking in fear. They all run toward Lin, and Sun Rong hugs her happily. Jinke returns from his maintenance checkup, and he tells Jinke the girls at the shop were full of passion. The demon counselor reforms into his shape and sees Lin Xiaoyu with the sword. He possesses her and questions who turned his ring of chaos into a sword. He performs a soul search and sees the face of Sun Rong with the others. He thanks the demon emperor for bringing the monkey's offspring to him, and he promises to avenge his demon race. The next day at school, Wang, Chen, and Guo peep at two students while they give and receive gifts. Mr. Wang Zukong sees them at the door, and the class's door bursts wide open. Mr. Wang seizes the gift saying the school is for cultivation, not for fun or joy, so they should concentrate on their studies, not well-wishing gifts. The girl gives the guy a gift because it is the autumn reunion time, and people give their friends things they made themselves. She begs Mr. Wang intensely in his office while Sun Rong peeps. She wonders how she would present Wang with her gift when their instructor is against it. Lin Xiaoyu suddenly appears behind her, and she tells Sun to wait till Mr. Wang gets off work to give Wang the sachet. Sun Rong negates the opinion, saying they do not open the school at night, but Lin Xiaoyu assures her she lives on campus, so that shouldn't be a problem. Zhang Liuying tries to break herself out of prison after discovering that the world's spiritual force is low, so the restraints on the Supreme Jail are weak. Chen and Guo discuss the mirror of the moon bridge that A's friend advised her to visit with her crush. Guo talks about the supernatural myths behind the bridge, causing Chen to freak out while Wang stands up to get his noodles. Sun Rong appears and taps him on his head thrice with a ruler, and she leaves, hoping he understands. But Wang just stares in confusion. Chen and Wang stand close to him while Guo explains Sun Rong's intention. He says Sun Rong wants them to meet at the back door of the campus at midnight. Sun Rong waits alone for Wang at the campus. Her face lights up when she sees Wang, but she expresses her disappointment to see Guo and Chen with her. Chen tells her they didn't want Wang to go on the adventure alone so they can protect him. Chen asks if she doesn't mind their presence, and she replies that she would love to go on the adventure with them, but her mind is more pissed at the situation because of the gift sachet she intends to give him. They start the adventure, but Guo expresses his fear when he hears a sound that turns out to be a wild cat. Guo laughs at him while Sun Rong teases him, asking if he is scared. Chen disagrees with her and offers to lead the way to show his strength. They continue their journey, and Chen sees another figure like a ghost, which causes him to freak out. Sun Rong calms him down to inform him it is Lin Xiaoyu, and she is their adventure guide because she stays on the school campus while Wang stares at her suspiciously. 
The whole building vibrates because Zhang Liuying has successfully freed herself from the cage. She devises a method to escape from the Supreme Jail, and she sees a water base from the pipes in the school. Chen and Guo discuss the spiritual girl statue they saw in the faction, while in the restroom, until they suddenly hear the toilet rumbling. Chen frets while Guo opens the toilet lid, and the dirty water splashes on his face. Chen Chao faints immediately while Guo Hao defends himself. Wang and Sun Rong run inside to check on them. Wang sees Zhang Liuying climbing out of the toilet seat, and he flushes her back in with force which causes her to land in a secret room where she senses her sister's, her sister's smell. She sees an exit lift, and she goes through it. Sun Rong questions what occurred that caused Chen and Guo to pass out. Lin Xiaoyu suggests they continue their adventure without them, but Sun Rong declines, saying she can't leave them alone. Jinke notifies Wang that Zhang Liuying is escaping again, so he goes after her. Zhang Liuying contemplates who to assassinate first between Zhuo Yi and her sister, but she finally decides on Sun Rong. The lift opens, and he smashes her down to the ground again. Sun Rong and Lin Xiaoyu appear, and they question what caused the hole in the lift, but Wang keeps quiet. Lin Xiaoyu excuses herself, and Jinki questions what the demon in her is up to. The demon's counselor says he will take Sun when the portal opens at midnight. He wants Sun to pay for the sins of her ancestors when they destroyed the demon race on their way to the west. Wang and Sun Rong continue their adventure together, and they arrive in front of the Mirror of the Moon Bridge, and she tells Wang the story behind the mirror. She says the mirror has the legend of transcending space, and the mirror will reflect one's future if visited on the 7th of August. Zhang Liu Ying swims out of a small pool of water again to find Wang and Sun Rong. She celebrates her luck for seeing Sun Rong and follows them. Wang looks through the mirror during Sung's narration, and he sees Jiang on the statue. Before processing his next action, he gets hit by Lin Xiaoyu. Sun Rong screams in shock while Lin Xiaoyu informs her he is back. Sun Rong charges to attack her, but Lin bends her with a spell. The demon reveals himself in the mirror. He says the mirror can help restore any crack in space, so he can use it to create the portal back to the demon world. He opens the portal and welcomes Sun Rong to the demon world, but Jiang Liu Yuing runs towards them to attack Sun Rong, saying she belongs to her. Wang quickly appears between them and breaks Sun Rong free. Jiang uses the force to attack the demon, sending him back through the portal and closing it in the process. Wang strikes Jiang intensely after she recovers from hitting the demon. Wang stays beside Sun Rong, and he picks up her sachet. He assures her he has it secured when she asks for it. Chen Chao chats happily in his room with an internet idol, Fairy Fox. Zhuo Yi summons the top predecessors of the human world from their retreat for a meeting to discuss the world's spiritual force situation. He explains that the top total value of the world's spiritual energy has dropped to 4.7, so the spiritual energy crisis is developing. One of the predecessors tells him a similar occurrence had happened in the previous year, so it is not enough to call them from their retreat. Zhuo Yi explains that the shell of the human world has become very fragile. So many infiltrates from the demon world have been coming in through the spatial crack. Some of the predecessors decide the best way to fix the crack. One of them suggests building a wall to strengthen it, while another predecessor argues against it saying the demons have been greedy and coveted the human world for a long time, so a war is about to break out, and they must fight to protect themselves. The predecessors continue arguing about the action to take until Zhuo Yi cuts them short, saying that the coordinates to the human world are unknown, and they may get lost in the spatial storms if they start an expedition into the crack immediately. The leader suggests they seize a demon to ask about the coordinates. The other members bow in agreement, and another predecessor says the demons will act rashly, but they will follow his decision. They all go offline, and Zhuo Yi questions the cause. Guo Hao distracts Wang from his voice chat and informs him that Chen Chao's father is punishing him at the gate. The students gather around Chen Chao and his father to watch their drama. Mr. Chen scolds his son for dropping back to the foundation phase. Chen Chao explains that he transferred his energy to his friend, who needed funds to heal her master, and she was going online to beg. His father commends him for being selfless and helping his friend in need. Mr. Chen returns Chen Chao's phone and decides to leave, but he stops to ask if he knows where the tongue of Heavenly Hound is. Chen freaks out, and his smartphone plays the live chat where the fairy fox talks about Chen's help with the tongue of Heavenly Hound. His father hears and slashes his phone instantly, in an attempt to hurt him particularly. He commands him to stop watching the live stream. Sun Rong and the others walk through the school hall. Sun questions how Chen Chao lost some of his spiritual energy. Guo Hao replies that live streaming has been upgraded to provide a function where fans reward their favorites with spiritual energy. Lin Zhaoyu says it's witchcraft because, in ancient times, 
Witches would seduce passersby to drain their spiritual energy gradually until it left them weak and disabled. Sun commends Yao Yu for knowing so much, while Guo Hao says Chen's phone was severed by his father so he will not have access to the live stream. While on their way, they hear sounds from the computer room. They enter and discover that Chen is live streaming with the school's computer. Sun Rong sighs and says he is hopeless, while Wang questions if the live stream is operated by a demon. Lin Xiaoyu affirms, and she says the best way to conquer her witchcraft is in vitro meta spirit. Spirit. The meta spirit wanders into cyberspace and enters the demon's live stream room to interrupt them. She adds that the conquering would require someone in the golden pill face, or even higher. Goo Hao suggests another way is by using his digital spiritual beast Trojan to blow up the fairy fox demon's live stream. He types in the live stream address and sends Trojan to blow it up. Fairy fox suddenly gets a warning alert, and she strikes the Trojan force back, which destroys it. Fairy fox continues chatting with Chen Chao and he responds happily. Sun Rong says he is finished and also looks thin. Wang suggests using the little wise guy's mind game that uses the art of seduction to trick anyone that receives a gift from the spellcaster. Sun Rong appears beside Chen during the live stream, and she offers him a drink. Fairy Fox questions if she is his mate, and Chen declines instantly, saying they just go to the same school. Sun Rong rolls her eyes against his words. Chen gulps the drink, and Sun Rong casts the spell instantly. Immediately, Fairy Fox receives a notification that her popularity value is dropping. Sun Rong tells Chen he should go home because they care for him. Chen announces to Fairy Fox that he is leaving, but she stops him with her words and controls his mind. She tells him words like it is her first time chatting with a fan, especially a fan who offered to help her master, and she will miss him if he leaves because she has low streaming popularity. Sun Rong tries to shake him out of his thoughts, but he shuns her, saying she should behave. Sun Rong feels the shock and stays mute, while Xiaoyu wonders what will happen. The fairy fox says her plan is going well, and just a few more spiritual energy harvests will help her recover her boss's body. Mr. Chen arrives and laments about his son, saying he was as young and confused as Chao when he was younger. Mr. Chen adds that the tongue of Heavenly Hound was a gift from his wife when they were younger. He wonders what evil his family has done to deserve such karma. Fairy Fox. Thanks, Chen Chao and his father angrily slashes the computer into two. He orders his son to come with him, but he disagrees and says he is going to another dimension. Suddenly, Chen Chao connects an electric plug to himself, causing him to erupt in a bright light. Guo calls it the vitro meta spirit that only someone in the golden pill phase can master. His father questions what he is trying to do, but he is surprised that Chao is not responding. Xiaoyu explains that Chen Chao's spirit is in cyberspace so what is left behind is a shell of his body. Chen Chao travels through the light portal to the Fairy Fox's stream room. Fairy Fox removes her disguise since she has collected more than one million spiritual energies. Chao arrives through the computer, but he is surprised that the live stream room is wallpaper. He sees the demon behind him saying, Chao doesn't recognize him because he turned off his beauty mode. Chao's father tries to drag his spirit back with pressure, but all his efforts prove abortive. Wang asks for the address of the live stream room, and Guo questions if he wants to watch a live stream too. Chen Chao tries to attack the demon, but the demon tells him to stop trying, because a meta spirit is unable to attack a spiritual body, so he should just enter the energy can and become a spiritual energy for him. He tries to send Chao into the energy can, but Chao gets distracted by Sun's voice on the computer screen. Wang punches the demon from the screen while he drags Chao back in. The news announces that Zhuo Yi discovered the demon base where a large quantity of spiritual energy was recovered, but the culprits have escaped, while the Flower Fruit Curtain group has been declared bankrupt. Mr. Sun, Sun Rong's father, tries to reach out to one of his friends to rent him about 200 million spiritual energy to save his company from bankruptcy, but he says he will consider his request. Mr. Sun flares up at him for declining his request, saying he helped while they were in school, but he is giving up on him now. He attends to the person knocking on the door. The man gives him a letter from the Songhai Court of Law that liquidation will be carried out the next day. Sun Rong's friends decide to visit her in her new house, and they get confused about the exact location when they find themselves before a mountain not a house. Sun Rong jumps down from the trees and they all express their shock. She leads them into the mountain and offers them drinks with molded cups. Guo complains that he knows her family has failed in doom breaking, but he didn't expect they would return to the Stone Age. Sun Rong explains that they mortgaged all their properties, so the ancestral fortress was the only place left for them to stay. Wang asks her how the situation happened, and she explains that the drop in the total value of the world's spiritual energy 
brought about poor, immortal herb harvest since their family produces magic pills as a pharmaceutical company. Mr. Sun interrupts their conversation and assures Sun Rong that they will recover their losses. He says the Sun Rong group developed from the mountain, so they will plant new seeds for the pills and become wealthy again. The Tang family celebrates Sun Rong's family loss. Tang commends his uncle for tampering with the Sun's stocks and short-selling their company. The uncle explains that it was just a game of spiritual capital. Since the total value of the world's spiritual energy is low and their stock is unreasonably high, he will spread fake information and dump the great number of shares he bought in the Sun's stock so all the major shareholders would jump off the board. He says they must carry on with their scheme as planned to eliminate the Sun family once and for all because the spiritual vein of the flower fruit resides in the mountain. Tang Jingzi, thanks him for his help, and he asks why he is helping them destroy the Sun family. The uncle, Richmond, tells him that he needs the spiritual energy. Mr. Sun narrates the history of the Sun's family to the crew, while Wang walks up to meet Sun Rong. He questions why she is bothered, and she shows him the spiritual spring water. She explains that there used to be a waterfall hanging at the entrance of the water curtain cave, and now there is only a tiny bit left. She says the mountain's spiritual vein will be cut off if the water dries up completely. Wong tells her they can help, but she thanks him and declines, saying the Sun family still possesses the worker bee spirit, so they will fight back. Guo calls out to Wong, and he announces they have to go. Outside the mountain, a car speeds very fast beside them, almost crushing them, so they curse at it. While on the train, Zhao Yu says she was expecting Sun Rong to be depressed with her family's bankruptcy, but she was surprised to see her worker bee spirit. Chen says they might be bankrupt, but they still have the magic mountain. Their attention diverts to the TV showing news about Tang Finance taking over the Sun Company, and that the takeover ceremony will happen in Matt Flower Fruit. The news broadcaster says the two heirs will sign a bloodborne agreement. Chen flares up, and he questions why Sun Rong will sign a bloodborne agreement with Tang Jingze. Guo wonders how it occurred when they just left the place. Wang informs them that he saw the Tang logo on the limo that almost hit them before, so the Sun's family was forced to sign the agreement. They decide to set off to the mountain. Before the ceremony, Mr. Tang and Mr. Sun speak together. Mr. Tang tells him they will plant chives in the water curtain cave, which grows all year round instead of the immortal herbs that take a hundred years to grow. Wang and his crew arrive at the entrance of the mountain, but Xiaobei notifies the other members of Tang's crew about their arrival. The red-haired member stops them, saying he doesn't know how they won the competition, but he wants Riving. Chen and Guo charge to attack them, but they get stuck in Xiaobei's web, and two faction 59 boys try to attack them. Xiaoyu dispels the web magic while she charges to attack Xiaobei on the tree. Guo and Chen defeat them successfully, while Wang runs to save Sun Rong. At the party, Mr. Tang gives a heartwarming speech about the event and the agreement between the two families that have been holding grudges against each other for years. Tang signs his agreement, and he urges Sun Rong, who is contemplating, to sign hers. Wang suddenly runs towards the podium and pulls her away. While on the stairs, Mr. Sun calls out to his daughter, reminding her of her promise. Sun Rong apologizes to Wang and the crew for stressing to rescue her. She explains that signing the agreement is not her free will, but she is doing it to save the company because Mr. Tang offered to invest in their company. Sun Rong walks back inside while Tang trades words with Wang and everyone. On their way back, Tang notices a force in the water deposit, so he enters to discover a star worm. Go explains that the worm is a fearful demon that sucks the Earth's spiritual veins, and Wang pulls it out. Richmond detects that the star worm has been discovered, but he says it is too late because it has sucked all the mountain's spiritual veins. He expresses his shock when he realizes the spiritual energy is flowing back. Wang and the crew all drag the star worm out together, and Wang orders it to return the Sun's family's spiritual vein. A great sensation occurs, and the star worm exhausts in flames, causing the Sun's family stock to rise immediately. At the ceremony, just as Sun Rong tries to sign, she sees the explosion outside the cave, and suddenly, the waterfall starts flowing backward. Mr. Tang tries to distract their attention, but his assistant gives him bad news that their company has triggered a circuit breaker on the stock market, while Sun receives good news for their company's stock. Zhuo Yi arrives with a warrant to arrest the Tang family for colluding with the demon world. The Sun employees gather around Sun to care for her. She asks for Wang, and she sees him with the sachet causing her to smile. The scene opens with a ceremony organized for the Songhai Spiritual Sword Art Assembly, where students from all major factions in the district are present to exhibit their unique sword skills. The host invites Zhuo Yi, Instructor Si, and two sword dance team members, Ling Yuan and Hanser. Hanser and Ling Yuan inform the audience that in ancient times, sword cultivation took power as the sole standard to rank spiritual swords. But now, in peace times, 
They do not have to contest with their swords anymore, so the program is an opportunity to find the art and beauty in swords. The host announces the prizes for an interactive audience, and he invites Soon Rong as the first practitioner, calling her the most talked about student. The screen displays her, and an evil man, Richmond, smirks at her. Sun Rong introduces herself to the Swordmasters. Instructor Z calls her Miss Bankruptcy, and she questions what she intends to do since most of her swords were damaged at the competition, and she sacrificed her sword spirit to win. Sun Rong tells her she has been training hard since then, and she wants the instructor to give her enlightenment on her skills. Zhuo Yi commends Sun Rong for being high-spirited, and he questions what she intends to show them. Sun Rong replies that she would be performing the sun's ancestral sword skill the ocean dance. She commences her sword dance, and the students applaud while the instructors commend her for controlling more than a dozen swords. Sun Rong showcases a good sword dancing skill until Richmond sends some spiritual thorns that change the direction of her swords. It charges toward Instructor Zhi and the other instructor. Mr. Wang quickly saves her, but Liang Liuyue jealously appears to stop him from holding her further. Zhuo Yi informs her that it is dangerous to control many swords simultaneously, so she should manage what she can while the students backlash her for her awful display in their words. Xiaoyu and Wang Ling walk up to her after her display. She apologizes for her faulty performance, saying she can't achieve anything without her sword spirit. Xiaoyu urges her to bring her sword to the shop so she can calibrate it for her, and she thanks her. Wang consoles her by saying, it is not her fault. The operations team records a mass increase in the ratings on the webcast because of the incident that occurred with Sun Rong, and the team member expresses her disbelief because she wasn't expecting a huge turnout. The host, hearing this news, instructs them to continue the webcast and he calls the incident a blessing in disguise. The students continue to drop biased ratings about Sun Rong on the webcast, and Wang reads them. The host invites the next practitioners, who turn out to be Guo Hao and Chen. One of the Swordmasters questions if they intend to challenge themselves, but Chen Chao declines, explaining they are just there for a little show. Guo Hao says they have a friend who is under a lot of pressure and is experiencing a tough time, but she smiles regardless. Chen Chao apologizes for being unable to help her, but he looks at Sun Rong and tells her they want to present the show for her so she can be happy. The Swordmaster questions what they intend to display, and Chen Chao, dramatic as always, mentions that they are displaying the skill of snatching a sword with bare hands. Instructor Z mocks them for intending to use an old trick, but Chen adds further that he will be summoning the trick blindfolded. He proceeds with the display and summons his sword spirit. Instructor Z mocks him again for summoning an incomplete sword spirit. Guo Hao charges to attack him, but Richmond, still behind the monitors, makes another effect on the system causing the mighty sword to hit Chen's head intensely. The host tries to make the atmosphere less tense by calling Chen's head the Iron Head, while Guo drags him out of the stage. The operation team records more than a million viewers, causing the spiritual energy index to break the platform record. The evil man anticipates collecting enough spiritual energy with his actions. The host invites Yisha Bei, also Xiao Bei from Faction 59, to display her sword skills. She controls thousands of swords, which fascinates the instructors, and Ms. Shi boastfully comments that she is using scientific cultivation, which is a modern way of controlling swords, as opposed to the old ways. Xiao Bei successfully displays her skills without any interception. Chen and Guo arrive back at the seats to meet Sun Rong. Sun Rong expresses her worries, but Guo assures her the doctor has checked him out. Chen questions if she is in a better frame of mind, and she smiles. They question where Lin Xiaoyu and Wang went to. The host introduces Lin Xiaoyu as the last performer of the day. All the students, including Sun Rong, exclaim adorably when they discover her beauty and finesse. Sun Rong comments that she looks beautiful without her glasses. Xiaoyu begins her performance and they all applaud how skillful she is. The students confess that they like her, while some question who she is. She continues her performance, and she lights a tree up in flames until the rich man decides to showcase his master plan. The tree begins to burn more brightly, causing the students to fear when Xiaoyu circles without control. Sun Rong realizes something is wrong, so she quickly jumps out to save Xiao Yu, relieving the students and instructors. They all applaud their skills, calling it the best stage plan. Meanwhile, the operations team shockingly recorded 1 billion views on their webcast. Richmond appears on the stage and announces that the students' contributions have provided the 1 billion spiritual energy he needs to power his magic. He casts the ultimate world-class control on everyone in the world with the possibility of making them his puppets. He looks at Sun Rong and Zhao Yu and says, it is a pity they can't hear his grand and scheme. To his surprise, Sun Rong questions who he is. He asks how they escaped his control, and Wang replies that his magic formation lost its effects. Richmond angrily questions how it happened, and Sun Rong explains she used the art of seduction on them. He decides to use violence, 
but the mini TV host appears and punches him deep into the sky. Sun Rong thanks the mini TV for saving her, but Xiao Yu notices there is something different about him. Sun Rong tries to turn the ultimate control, but she finds it difficult to release them. Xiao Yu says the ultimate control is mixed with demon spirits and has taken control of their senses so they are no longer just puppets but self-moving evil dummies. The students charge toward Sun Rong and the others. Zhang Liu Ying, the Shadow Faction boss, is locked in an insulator cage after her last attempt to escape. She tries to seduce the guard into getting her out, but the security guard teases her with the key and tells her she has a naive plan because the insulator cage can control her thoughts so she can't seduce him. Suddenly, the ultimate control spell consumes them, and they all freeze. The security guard with the key still holds it out, causing Jiang to thank the supreme being for making a way out. The trio tries to escape from the evil dummies, but they get blocked. Wang escapes from them with the girls by creating a wind obstruction, but they run toward a dead end. Jinke suggests that Wang uses the 100% trick of forgetting to break their curses, but Wang declines saying it will cause impaired intelligence. He decides to use his sword as a flying object for them. Xiaoyu commends him for his skills, while Jinkei complains that he is a magic ware, not a flying sword. They arrive at the top of the building and try to detect the best way to unleash the curse. Sun Rung feels a sensation in her head, so she looks down to check out who is sending signals. But to her surprise, she sees a large number of the dummies climbing up the building with a staircase. She sees a figure with a more glowing sign, and he turns out to be Chen Chao. He charges toward Sun Rong at full speed, and he shouts to Sun Rong that he likes her, but she rejects him, saying she doesn't like him. Chen crashes into the ground, and he stands up to express that his chest is painful. He questions where he is, and they detect the ultimate control on his heat has been released. Xiao Yu says the curse broke because he hit his head on the ground, but Sun Rong disagrees. She thinks and discovers the logic is because she rejected him, so his heart felt the pain, therefore releasing him from the ultimate control. She decides to shout at all the other dummies in climbing the ladder that she doesn't like them. They all feel hurt, and the curse breaks off their heads. Sun Rong expresses her happiness because they feel relieved. Chen questions how she would reach out to everyone, and he wonders how long she would keep shouting. Xiao Yu suggests that she would initiate her live stream to tell everyone. Sun Rong tries to activate it, but she discovers there is no connection. Xiao Yu directs their attention towards the tower. They look up to see Jiang Liu Ying standing by it and restricting the connection. Jiang mocks Sun Rong for trying to release the ultimate control too soon, but she says she is too late because she has control of the cell tower. She adds that they have to surrender themselves if they intend to generate a connection from the tower. The students, unable to hear her indistinct words clearly, warn her about the meteor coming down. The meteor showers down and explodes into the tower down to the ground. They ask different questions, wondering about the cause of the meteor. Xiao Yu says the day feels like the doomsday of the human world after experiencing all the calamities. Wang uses his foresight to check the cloud, and he discovers a strange object. Sun Rong laments about the destroyed tower, and Chen suggests they find another one. Sun explains that her family got the contract to build the towers, so the next one is thousands of kilometers away. Wang points to the sky and informs them there is an internet connection in one of the satellites. Chen confirms Wang's words, saying, The Fort Sky Loop is the biggest communication station in Huaxiu, so they can broadcast to the entire human world from there. Zhao Yu questions how they will get to space, and Wang brings out the ticket prizes that the host offers to give the interactive viewers to get a free one-day tour of the Fort Skyloop. Wang flies with all of them using his sword, and they express their fear of falling into the midst of the dummies. Jinky complains about bearing a burden too heavy for his age, but Wang promises him two packs of crispy noodles. Jinky's mood changes, and he adds more speed. They finally arrive at the space train station, but the dummies are closing in on them faster than expected. Chen Chao tells them the ticket is only for two, so Sun Rong can go with Wang while they defend them from the dummies. Sun Rong expresses her worries about being overwhelmed by the dummies, but Chen assures her of his strength. Wang pulls her away, and they run into the train escaping from the dummies, while Chen attacks the dummies outside. While on the train, Sun Rong notices Wang's countenance, and she wonders if he intends to make a confession. Wang informs her he has something to say and Sun Rong anticipates, but she gets disappointed when he tells her, he noticed there was no official at the train station, so Chen and Xiao Yu could have followed them. Sun Rong stares at him disappointedly while replying to him. The train announces their arrival at the fort Skyloop. At the fort, Wang connects to the internet for Sun Rong, and she walks out to do her live stream. Sun Rong gives the people a long speech about how she feels. She explains that she had always felt loved by everyone while she was growing up until she started schooling at the faction, 
and she realized the world didn't revolve around her. Plus, she was not the perfect daughter she thought she was. She worked hard to prove herself and get stronger until her family went bankrupt, which got her depressed and caused her to realize that the things she had taken for granted were valuable. She explains that she wanted to feel loved by everyone, which is why she participated in the Songhai Sword Art Assembly and got the love of everyone, but she was not satisfied. She apologizes to the people that she doesn't need the love of more people, but the love of just one man. The people get released from the ultimate control spell after feeling hurt by her speech. Xiao Yu confirms that Sun Rong has released everyone. Chen spots another meteor coming down. The operation team in the Fort Skyloop spots the meteor, and they call it a giant flaming rock about 20 kilometers in diameter, charging toward the human world at high speed. They question if the mass extinction of species is about to commence again. Wang and Sun Rong spot it, and Wang sends his sword toward the flaming rock, causing the rock to dispel its flame into ice. The students go on a practice trip to BP Animations, and their host, Mr. Tang, gives them a breakdown of the company's early project. Chen questions if they will have the opportunity to practice there. He affirms and welcomes them to join if they are animation fans. The host takes them into the animation production room, which is a very rowdy and weird office. He takes them to the company's producer's office, but a lady in distress runs up to him and calls him boss. Mr. Tang introduces her as the company's producer with strong capabilities. He also mentions that she is one of the key employees in the company. Wang Ling tells Mr. Tang that the producer has something to say so he should listen. The producer explains that the director has run away. Mr. Tang questions why she is just informing him when they are going online soon. The producer replies that he was drawing a storyboard in the retreat, and he suddenly ran off so they think he was bewitched. Mr. Tang orders her to go find him, but she explains that someone has to be on the production site. Mr. Tang thinks deeply, and he finally smiles at the solution that he got. He informs the practice students that since they are practitioners, they have the chance to practice being a director. Chen expresses his happiness while the producer freaks out, and she begs Mr. Tang to desist from his decision, but he assures her to be calm. He explains that viewers are the best directors, so since the early phases of the work have been done, the only duty left for the producer is content review, so the director will be fine. The producer lies on the floor crying, while Mr. Tang informs the other employees that the practitioners will be the directors since the director has run away. Mr. Tang shows them the key animation section. He explains that an animation season consists of a dozen episodes, and since a director cannot pay attention to every detail in each episode, the conductors oversee individual episodes. The major director will meet with the conductors and will allocate the coots to key animators who are good at drawing. The students gather around a key animator, and they commend his word. Instead of acknowledging their comments, he boasts and says that is what a key animator does while calling them acting directors. Chen Chao asks him a serious question about the animation, and he replies. The student continues to ask until he runs out of answers to give them. The key animator screams at Chen to shut up, and he says he will present the animation in 24 FBS. He transforms and releases a pen to start drawing. Guo Hao calls it the art of liver bursting. Mr. Tang affirms, saying the animator enlightened his pen to allow the digital pen to draw the animation, and only someone in the golden pill phase can master the skill. Sun Rong questions why they don't use the skill often. Mr. Tang explains that the skill can damage the liver, causing the animators to land in the ICU if used excessively. The animator completes his drawing, and he informs them. Chen Chao explains it is not as clear as the other frames they watch, so he questions if he can use 60 FPS. The animator angrily screams at them for stressing him further. The producer asks Mr. Tang what they should do since they do not have 60 FPS. A photographer proposes showing them how they make 60 FPS animation. The photographer explains they use post-composite software to combine the key animations and make the pictures move. Special effects like blur or fireworks like water surfaces are also post-composite jobs, so they cannot work on designs until all the materials are complete. He shows them a 60 FPS design, and they all express their amazement. He says he can go even higher than 60 FPS to 120 FPS or 1200 FPS. The photographer explains some other things and asks Chen if he is satisfied with the response, calling him a frame rate detective. Chen Chao looks thoroughly and discovers another issue again. He expresses his thoughts that computer-made animations don't have souls. The photographer angrily shouts at him, and he tells him to do it if he can. Guo Hao holds him back. Mr. Tang takes them to the art session where they draw scenes and determine the artistic style of a production. He explains using the example of different scenes and how art interprets it. Mr. Wang asks if they have any comments, but the producer kneels and begs him, saying that there is no need for comments because the designer, Mr. Zhu, has been exhausting his liver for over half a year, and he can't hold on for much longer. Mr. Tang listens to her and appreciates his effort. He instructs him to go and get married in his hometown when the episode is over. Suddenly, 
Mr. Ju gets shocked and turns to sand. Jinke tells Wong that the total value of the world's spiritual force is dropping rapidly. The producer, Miss Wong, kneels in tears, saying she can do nothing now because she has lost so many hands. Chen Chao consoles her and he suggests helping her. He says he has checked the production process during their tour, and they can improvise as the hands she needs. Miss Wong looks at him with incapable eyes, and she says it takes about 30 years to make a qualified key animator. Mr. Tang urges her to give them a chance because they were just like them when they started, and he calls them the future of Hua Chu, so they deserve a chance. He stretches his hand out to her, and she accepts. They commence the drawing, and she gives them the necessary instructions with everyone having their distinct part of the storyboard. Chen Chao looks at the storyboard, and he freaks out questioning what it is. Miss Wong explains that the directors are mostly busy, so they just scribble things for the key animators. They all struggle with their drawings until Wong uses the art of enlightening spells on all their pens to make them draw what is on their minds. Miss Wong calls it the art of liver bursting, but he disagrees. Miss Wong submits the drive containing their work to the supervisor to modify it, but she deletes the whole folder, saying she can't have such twisted things existing on her computer. Chen Chao expresses his disbelief. They all sit down dejectedly, saying they don't have the talent for animations. Jinka informs his master that the total value of the world's spiritual energy is dropping to zero, and he questions what they will do to prevent the world from getting destroyed. Wang stands up and searches for the director. He finally sees the director, and he returns with him to get the conductors and key animators to work. The students all adore his expertise, and they commend him. Everyone gets back to work, and Wang thanks them for creating a beautiful world. The scene begins with a recap of the incident that occurred while Wang and Sun Rong were on the Fort Skyloop. Richmond was responsible for the meteor shower as per the instruction from the Demon King. He realizes that Wang has been the enemy, not the Sun Descendant, because he has been pretending to be the dog, despite acting like a real wolf. He decides to destroy the world alongside himself. The Demon Counselor tries to stop him, saying they should conquer the human world, not destroy it. The Demon King instructs the Counselor to allow him to do his thing. The Counselor accepts, and Richmond thanks the Demon King. He says he is on at this time, and will try his best not to miss it again, while transforming into a mighty snake, hoping to drag the world along when he dies. Wong throws his sword at Richmond, and the meteor scatters into different smaller water-like sections. The Demon King expresses his anger at Richmond's failure, and instructs the counselor to light the dimensional lamps, which he does. On their way back, Sun Rong suggests they hang around the fort sky loop before they leave because it is not easy to come up to the fort. Wang Ling agrees with her, and they return to the top of the fort. Sun Rong detects a strange feeling, and she suddenly realizes they've become three-dimensional while the world outside is still normal. Zhuo Yi summons the predecessors to a meeting, and a white-haired predecessor barges in to scold Zhuo Yi for almost getting him bewitched because he left the retreat. He questions why he didn't call the meeting online, and Zhuo Yi explains that the meteor shower interrupted the network communication in Songhai, so he couldn't reach them. One of the predecessors criticizes the white-haired predecessor for complaining about the retreat when the world is getting destroyed and demons are invading. The white-haired predecessor tells him to send the Seven Star Squad. Zhuo Yi explains that the Seven Star Squad is busy evacuating the citizens, so they can't launch an effective counter-strike. Zhuo Yi breaks down his plan to find a powerful practitioner, to put him in the formation to function as a battery so they can initiate the thunder and kill the demons. Zhuo Yi informs them that they require massive spiritual energy, but they have lost contact with their number one world practitioner. The white-haired predecessor says he has enough spiritual energy to give, but Zhuo Yi rejects his offer, saying his status is not high enough to be number one. The white-haired predecessor insists on showing him he is as good as the number one practitioner. Wang and Sun Rong try to find a way out of the Fort Sky Loop passage. Sun Rong throws her sword to find a path, but the sword completes a loop and reverts to her. She confirms they cannot escape forward or backward. Wang suggests they use the side so he will break through the walls. Sun Rong reminds him that there is space outside the wall. He taps her nose and tells her the guardian light will protect her. Wang breaks through the world only to discover they are in a spatial cycle. Sun Rong, bothered about the situation, questions what they will do. Wang says Jinki could break through the dimensional wall if he was around but Jinki is still in space after attacking the meteor shower. Jinki laments about being thrown to such a far distance by his master. The Demon King commends the counselor for his wonderful dimensional lamps, 
and how it has helped them trap the enemy, Wang. The counselor boldly says only dimensional spiritual treasures can break his seal, because nothing else can. He informs the demon king that 30 of his 30 90 dimensional lamps have been knocked out, so he has just 30 60 lamps functioning, but they cannot power the formation to its full function. The demon emperor assures him it is just a few lamps, so there will be no harm. He asks after the battle going on in the human world. The demons have invaded the human world, and the seven star squad is trying their best to defeat them. Zhuo Yi fights with a demon and he escapes. His team members notify him that he has made the demon more angry. Zhuo Yi communicates with his squad about the doom-breaking formation. They inform him they are almost complete with the setup, but another demon arrives and attacks them, disrupting their communication. The news broadcasts the calamities and invasions going on in the world. Mr. Wang announces to his wife that they have to leave. She cries while asking Wang Ling, but her husband assures her she doesn't have to worry about him, which she agrees with. In the Fort Sky Loop, Sun Rong expresses her worries, and she asks Wang if they will be trapped there for the rest of their lives. She says the world will be destroyed when they eventually leave the fort. Wang displays the control panel and edits their feature to the high modulus mode. Wang sees the human world, and they wonder what is going on. In the world, the demons order the humans to surrender themselves because they have been surrounded, but Zhuo Yi informs them they are the ones that are surrounded. The white-haired predecessors arrive at the doom-breaking formation, and he dispels his spiritual energy to destroy the demons and close the portal. Zhuo Yi instructs the sword to protect him, while he continues. Sun Rong says something is not right, while the demon emperor says it is getting interesting. Zhuo Yi suddenly sees a large flame rock descending on them. The predecessor tries to hold it down, but it overweighs and crushes him. The demon emperor and the counselor laugh at him. More rocks and demons invade the earth. Sun Rong concludes that everything is finished, but Wang Ling discourages her thoughts, saying that the world can be saved. Wang steps into the lift and brings out the mirror. He explains to Sun Rong that the mirror will help them break the seal, because mirrors crash rendering most effectively. Sun Rong raises the mirror, and Wang asks Sun Rong to call out her ocean sword. He utilizes the ocean's particle effect, and the seal breaks off Wang, causing the dimensional lamps to be destroyed. The counselor is shocked at the destruction of his lamp. Wang instructs Sun Rong to stay back while he goes to save the world. Sun says his identity will be exposed, but Wang replies that he doesn't care. Wang charges into the world and destroys one of the rocks. People wonder who he is, but Zhuo Yi recognizes him as his master. Suddenly, Xiao Yu's butterfly image appears and touches Wang. She disappears with him. Xiao Yu's father trained her while she was younger to summon her magic butterfly, but she finds it difficult. Her father encourages her to keep going, but she asks if she is really in the butterfly race because her friends have flown long ago, but she doesn't even have wings. Her father tells her he couldn't fly until he was 10 when his father threw him to the butterfly valley. Xiao Yu asks why their grandfather did that, and her father explains that their butterfly race's wings have the magic power of transmission through space, so other demon races have always coveted their powers. He adds that if they cannot escape with their wings and they fall into the enemies, they will face calamities much worse than falling off a cliff. Xiao Yu asks if the demon will get them, but her father assures her he is there with her. Suddenly, they both hear sounds, and they discover they see the flame rocks descending. Xiao Yu's father blocks the attack and flings her into another dimension to keep her safe. She lands in the human day on a rainy night. Xiao Yu, while on the train with Wang, explains that after the demon emperor destroyed the butterfly race, she was raised by her sword spirit sister in the human world. It was the end of the world for her race, but to the demon race, it was routine. She explains that it was all about power for them, conquering the weaker race to gain their spiritual energy, and becoming more powerful to conquer another weaker race. Wang questions why she didn't fight back, and Xiao Yu replies that the demon race is an invulnerable myth where all the demon emperor needs to do is sit on the throne while his soldiers will bring him the races they have conquered. Wang says they conquered a demon invasion years before, so it should be easy, but Xiao Yu says he will meet him soon so he'll understand better. Back on Earth, Zhuo Yi questions where his master is. They get an interception broadcast message from Sun Rong in the Fort Sky Loop. She informs the people they are all trained cultivators, but peacetime has blinded their sight to combat, so the enemy is defeating them because they are not fighting back. She encourages all of them to fight the enemy wherever they are and however they can, because many of them are in the foundation phase and above to protect their home. Sun Rong's speech motivates the people, causing them to gather together and fight. The demon emperor applauds Sun Rong for giving a good speech, 
He says she is truly a sun descendant, but their actions are just meaningless dying kicks from an insignificant race. He anticipates how long they'll last before they are exhausted with his infinite soldier coming in. The operations team informs Sun Rong that they are surrounded. Xiao Yu appears before the Demon Emperor's throne with Wang Ling. She tells him she has brought Wang as per their agreement, so the Emperor should release her sword spirit sister. The Demon Counselor forces Xiao Yu to go on her knees saying a weak being does not deserve to stand before the emperor. He tries to force Wang to go on his knees, but Wang swipes him away with his hands. The demon king laughs intensely, and he stands from his throne, saying he has not left his throne for thousands of years, but he finally finds something interesting to get him up. The demon emperor assumes Wang is the wolf Richmond mentioned, and has been pretending to be a dog. Wang questions if killing him will end the war. The emperor jumps at Wang and asks him for his name saying he cannot fight with a nameless human. Wang introduces himself as a class elite member of the Songhai Faction 60. The Demon King fires at him, but Wang remains untouched, to the Emperor's surprise, and he asks if that's all he can do. The Demon Soldiers surround Fort Skyloop, and the operations team informs Sun Rong that if they don't destroy the Demon Carrier, the Demon Reinforcement will keep coming. Sun Rong thinks deeply, but she suddenly sees the Demon Carriers getting destroyed, and Jinke flies back to her. She recognizes him as Wang's sword spirit, and Jinke commends her for remembering. Sun Rong asks if Wang is in danger, but Jinke says whoever is trying to fight a battle with his master is in more trouble. At the Demon Kingdom, Wang punches the Emperor heavily, and he falls into the midst of his soldiers. The Emperor questions how the human world has such a powerful practitioner, and they are uninformed. Wang says he could destroy the world if he had a real battle there, but the Demon Kingdom is not his world so he doesn't mind. The Emperor escapes saying in terms of speed, Wang can't catch up because he is the king of the universe. Wang chases after him for a while, and they both strike each other in the process. Finally, the Emperor falls into the dungeon where Xiao Yu is trying to free her sword spirit sister. The Emperor says he doesn't understand why the insignificant human race can defeat him when he has defeated races stronger than theirs. Wang explains that Hua Chu has a civilization of tens of thousands of years. They have had their defeats and suffered the misery of destruction, but they never gave up because the human race will not bow to evil forces like him. The Demon Emperor disagrees with him, saying the defeat is because of an unreal powerful practitioner like him. The Demon Counselor appears behind Wang and foolishly pulls his spiritual figure off, saying he has watched him for a while, and he noticed that his spiritual figure gets changed every week meaning it is his weak spot. The Emperor and Counselor laugh and claim that victory belongs to the demon race. Suddenly, Wang's spiritual force bursts out and destroys the demon world. The demon carriers and all the demons in the human world get destroyed as well. The whole human world returns to normal, and a light rain falls. The humans celebrate their win, while Wang detects the rain is not an ordinary rain, but a rain of spiritual energy. The operations team announces that the total value of the world's spiritual force keeps rising because the demon world has collapsed due to an explosion. Sun Rong questions where Wang is. Xiao Yu and her sword spirit sister arrive in the human world. Wang arrives after her, and she apologizes for betraying the human world. She says he can hurt her, but should let her sword spirit sister go. Wang discards her words and informs her to pick up his phone from his pocket to dial his emergency contact his father, to bring him a spiritual figure, if she doesn't want the world to get destroyed. The war was recorded as the Demon War II, where the human race broke the myth of the Demon Emperor's vulnerability. Zhuo Yi became the world's hero yet again. The Flower Fruit Curtain Group regained prosperity under Sun Rong's reign. The city's reconstruction healed the trauma of the war in the city. Guo says the way the demons got destroyed halfway through the war was weird. Chen says they defeated them because of their drive to win. Guo wonders who the mysterious practitioner who sunk the demon carrier is. They try to detect his face from the picture, but the light disallows them. Sun Rong asks Wang what happened back in the demon world, but he sleeps deeply. 